Hello and greetings from Iceland. In this video, I will be covering some of the questions I've been getting from my subscribers and the tourists and some general information that you might want to have. And uh, as for footage, I am going up there myself this evening. So as for the visual treat, the best has yet to come. But this is a city that looked uh, last night in a time-lapse format or a whole new background. But for how long? That might be the biggest question of the day. So let's start with the map. And the most basic question, what does this location mean for us? The red layer is the lava from the eruptions in 2021 and 22. And this is eruption number three in 28 months. The new fissure lines up from the southwest to northeast, like other formations by the plate boundaries. And due to all the gas, the area was closed during the first 24 hours, or while the fissure was 900 meters long. So it turned out to be a fine shot to document the start, since, uh, like the previous eruptions, this soon took the shape of a single crater. And when we look at the white shots, you can see the lava shield thrown skelter, and the lava field thrown skelter rain, it covers 135 square kilometers. And the top crater is to the north from Mount Faradalsjall, not far away from the new fissure. And this lava shield, it extends all the way to the sea to the north, where the coastline is called Vogar, so this whole coastline is just material from a similar source that's pumping up now, giving us an idea about the huge powers at work. And we do have all the basics there for such an event now, and this could literally go on for years. And I have been getting questions like, uh, when will this thing uh, turn off? Will it uh, still be turned on uh, next uh, Friday? between uh, 4 and 6 o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, I have to say, it is just uh, rather hard to say. For a while it looked as uh, this could be a short-lived eruption like in 2022, but I'm not so sure now. There might be something more than the pipes, like uh, the dike between the new eruption and the Mount Keller is still widening, so it looks as experts are expecting uh, another fissure to open up between this mount here and uh, Keller. And uh, in that context, a new magma intrusion has been mentioned. And that could get us into considerable trouble, because uh, as things look now, the lava flows only to the south. There is a small valley filling up now, and from there the lava will start its journey along the east side of Mount Faradalsfjall all the way to the sea. At some time point it will close the so-called south coast road, but it's not the main road along the peninsula, so we can handle it, but when we look again at the lava shield, and perhaps new vents closer to Keller, all we need is a fissure to open up a few hundred meters to the north, and then we are looking at a completely different reality, or lava flowing to the north. The lava could block the main road along the Reykjanes Peninsula, or the airport road, Iceland's busiest highway. So technically, it is possible that uh, a sufficiently long fissure, with uh, a very high lava output, could simply flow both ways, although it do look as a highly unlikely scenario now. But you never know, this is a shield volcano in the forming. And one must not underestimate those natural forces that have created those uh, huge lava shields straight from the mantle. And we just entered a geological episode that could be quite long, or 300 years according to experts, so, it is of course a bit tempting to look into the future and ask, what if, like, what if uh, this crater, on top of this half-formed volcano shield, is there to stay, like, for some years? It will continue to build itself up, and at some time point, there will be no need for a fissure that extends to the north. The crater alone could, by time, divert the lava to there. So what I'm trying to tell you is that we are just browsing through some of the first pages in chapter number one in this extremely long book about the unrest on the Reykjanes Peninsula that started in 2021. This eruption could be gone tomorrow, but it could also be pumping magma after 10 years. This might turn out to be the best thing ever for tourism in Iceland, but this could also turn out to be a disaster, or forcing Icelanders to evacuate parts of the metropolitan area permanently. And uh, those side stories, they will be covered on my channel soon. I did a lot of filming around the city last year to prepare a video about the volcanoes around the city, and it is time to continue that work. But first, I'm going to visit the volcano with the thermal drone and the other drone as well. 
I won't be able to carry more stuff up there in one go. I still remember the trip last year with my tripod that's a bit heavy, like tripods should be, and I had this huge and heavy zoom lens with me, bunch of batteries and a drone, and when I got back I could hardly lift my feet up to the car. And this road is a bit longer, so I'm only taking the drones now. It is a priority for me to get the drone thermal footage from there, fly along the dike, so this will be the ultimate drone test. But as for you, who are on the way up there, it's 10 kilometers up there, one way. The trail is okay for the most part, very little elevation this time, but this is not a trip for young kids, and I advise you to check on safetravel.is before you go. The search and the rescue team from Grindavik will be there as always, I'm leaving a link to them. I know they helped uh, seven people back yesterday, but the biggest problem now will be the smoke, since uh, there is moss and Icelandic herbs uh, burning there, so you might be smelling like a smoked Icelandic Christmas steak when you get back. And uh, I do already see this overflow of footage on YouTube, the red stuff especially, that is what I expected. And uh, I want to capture some of it, of course, but the thing is that in some cases I could just use my shot from last year and uh, nobody would notice. So I will try to do things a bit differently, try to capture the wider picture with footage that helps me to explain things, but I'm hoping that the thermal footage will be something outstanding. So I look forward to bring that back to you. And uh, after this trip up there, I will be going back home for some days, I have a stuffed uh, hard drive with footage that I've been shooting while I was uh, scanning the area before the eruption, so it's plenty of work that awaits me. And I do have material for many more information videos, but I just need to uh, sit down at my usual place in peace. And uh, I do have two cameras on the way. One of them is a super zoom camera that my viewers helped me to uh, purchase. And the other is the 360 camera. So if this eruption goes on for some time, like I expect, my next trip up there will be with another set of cameras, or to capture the angles that others want, in most cases. So it's plenty to come, and with that, I'm sending you best regards from the Volcano Island, Iceland.